has begun. All right, cool. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, so uh, Fred, I guess I should pause for a quick sec just to do the customary, you know, thank you to the organizers. Thank you, Paul. I really do appreciate you know, putting together the seminar. It's been really fun, learning a lot of cool stuff. And I think it's, you know, it's been a really nice opportunity to uh, see some cool topics. Uh, so what I want to talk about today is homotopy groups of spectra. Um, and I'll come around in a little bit. I want to give a, just like a little bit of motivation first um, about why you might care about these things, um, you know, what kind of information they carry, how they show up in other areas of topology. Um, a little bit after that, I'll lay out some, some sort of goals for um, what definitions um, and maybe some computations I'd like to get through. Uh, and in true grad student fashion, I've perhaps put together more than I could ever reasonably talk about in an hour. Um, so I will try to uh, get through as much as I can and then point out um, you know, things that I don't get to. Um, it'll be sort of a bit at the end, maybe about cofiber sequences where I can maybe just sort of mention some of the results. Okay, so today, maybe want to start off with, with sort of a, maybe an impossible sort of goal. Um, you know, just at like a very high level. Uh, you know, here's, here's maybe a kind of problem we can think about. Just take the category of, of topological spaces and try to classify it. And I'm sort of being intentionally vague here about, you know, what does it mean to sort of classify category? I mean, there's sorts, lots of sorts of ways you could think about this. Uh, maybe you could have some sort of moduli space corresponding to you know, objects and morphisms in your category. Maybe you might ask for a classifying stack or some kind of algebraic structure like a group in nice situations. Uh, but maybe the, the immediate problem with that is that it's just way too hard. <laughs> it's uh, somehow the, the category of topological spaces has uh, you know, sort of a lot of pathological examples. I mean, you can sort of find easy cases where just the HOM sets uh, exhibit a lot of weird behavior. So you, you know, just take the HOMs between just R2 in itself, and that's not contractible. And of course, this you know, contains sort of a lot of very difficult theory, you have, you know, sort of theories of embeddings and self-homeomorphisms and mapping class groups. It's all kinds of stuff living in this category. Um, and, you know, there are also sorts of like weird objects when you just consider continuous morphisms, right? You have sort of space filling curves and uh, sort of one way to sort of maybe reduce this problem and make it a little bit easier is to think about, you know, passing from the topological category. So here I'm just thinking of top here, sort of a cartoon of maybe what the category looks like. And maybe I think of it sort of split up into blocks based on you know, uh, homeomorphism types. So any um, objects in this category that fall into the same box are homeomorphic. Uh, so you might consider passing to something like a homotomy category um, where the equivalence uh, relation is a little bit weaker. And so maybe you have some homeomorphism classes collapsed down into bigger homotopy types. Uh, but then maybe that somehow makes the problem easier of classifying what these homotopy types are. Um, right, so we're trading in this, this notion of isomorphism for maybe this sort of weaker notion of equivalence. Um, and I mean, yeah, this, this is just kind of a hard problem in general because, you know, the fiber over, say, like one homotopy type may have sort of a lot of things in it. So maybe if you think of this box, you might think of like, you know, just things that have the homotopy type of a point, contractible objects, sort of all of the, uh, you know, Euclidean spaces are contractible, so they all fall into that. But, you know, you have some results from Brouwer about invariance of domain that they're, you know, definitely not homeomorphic when you have different dimensions. Um, and so there's just kind of this basic overarching problem of when, you know, if you can tell that two spaces are homotopy equivalent, uh, you know, what can you do to decide if they're, say, homeomorphic or diffeomorphic or, you know, some other type of isom isomorphism type you might care about. Uh, so, okay. With uh, this weaker problem, maybe maybe we can try to classify just the, the category HOTOP, right? So just the homotopy category of spaces. Um, the problem is, is this is still pretty hard. <laughs> sort of even the, the simplest cases um, of just like looking at morphisms of objects is pretty wide open. Uh, so we've, we've seen a little bit these like homotopy groups of, of spheres pop up. Again, you just sort of define these as just take homotopy classes of maps between, I, mean, I guess I'm maybe thinking this is sort of a bi-graded object. Uh, in the natural numbers, so you have a grading on the homotopy group and a grading on the sphere. You have this whole set of maps, um, and we know barely any of these. <laughs> in fact, we know we do not know most of them uh, in some sense. Um, and you know, this is about as nice as you could hope for. I mean, spheres are you know, simply connected, compact, smooth manifolds. I mean, maybe taking these these gradings big enough. Um, you know, they embed into Euclidean spaces. I mean, it's, it's about as nice as you could hope for. Just a quick note, um, we saw 
in a previous talk, you know, there's this, this Freudenthal suspension, uh, at least, which maybe helps us understand this, this sort of bi-graded object a little bit better. Um, so if I just take, say, one of these homotopy classes of maps, and I have this sort of suspension functor, um, so it'll induce uh, sort of a, a map between, between the maps, right? I can just suspend each side. And maybe using the fact here that if you just suspend a sphere, you get a sphere of one dimension higher, um, sort of in, in big enough uh, ranges, sort of specific ranges, this will be an isomorphism. Um, and just sort of taking what this is as a definition, uh, some homotopy classes of maps from a sphere into another sphere are uh, homotopy groups of spheres. And this is telling you that eventually these guys uh, stabilize. So you take these, you suspend, uh, you get the next homotopy group of the next dimension sphere, and eventually those are just all equal. Um, and so we had this definition of uh, sort of using this theorem, we could define these stable homotopy groups, say just of a sphere, for example, where you take the co-limit over K, um, and you just sort of up, essentially apply this suspension functor. Um, that's kind of what you're, you're taking the co-limit over, is just taking that um, and applying it to homotopy classes of maps. Um, and just to kind of get like a concrete picture of what's going on here, I think it, it kind of helps to you know, sort of take the, so this happens when n is bigger than k equals, uh, so n is greater than or equal to k plus two. So just kind of take the, the sharp bound k plus two, see what it looks like on spheres. Uh, if you do that, then you're, you're getting isomorphisms from say pi two s two, to pi four s three, to pi six s four, pi eight s five. Um, and so I think one nice way I mean, if you just kind of go to the Wikipedia page for homotopy groups of spheres, you'll see some huge table like this. Um, it's kind of a lot to take in. Um, sort of the, the main takeaway here is that across the top, um, you know, I'm just sort of, we have a bi-graded thing. So I'm just listing out the two gradings. The top, I mean, they're spheres, but you know, you think of these as like the, the sort of homotopy group grading. And then this grading is like the, which sphere you're computing the homotopy group of. And uh, this, this sort of business above here is telling you to sort of go from one stable homotopy group to the next. You kind of make this sort of knight's move in the table, something that's like a by degree two one kind of move. So here, if you just start at pi two s two, kind of make a knight's move, then you wind up at you know, some other group here. And the point is, is that if you start at this first one and you apply the suspension functor, you're gonna start traveling along this diagonal and all of these groups are just going to be equal. Uh, once you're in this range. So this, this red line here is kind of telling you when you're in the stable range, just following these knight's moves. And then sort of everything out here is in this unstable range. These are like notoriously hard to compute. Um, and it's been a while since I've checked, but I think we know uh, some of these up to like something a degree less than 100. I mean, even just sort of computing these guys in this little block right here is already ridiculously difficult. Uh, Sayer did most of his thesis on, you know, just computing like these two guys. Um, but uh, so you might hope that, you know, if you just kind of take these diagonals, again, these are all the same group. Um, so in this case, you happen to get a, a copy of Z. Uh, you get a Z mod 2 and Z mod 2 on these diagonals. Eventually, you get a Z mod 24. And you kind of get some more stuff as you keep going out. Um, the idea here is maybe um, to help kind of motivate the idea of, of spectra is, you know, can we package these up into sort of one object and apply some functor to it and just have that functor uh, spit out the this sort of graded. Uh, uh, so we've kind of like eliminated one of the gradings, like the grading on the sphere. Um, and okay, so maybe maybe this will be an easier problem. So here's maybe an attempt number three. Uh, kind of the easier problem is to try to classify not the homotopy category, but maybe some like stabilized version of it. Um, and this will be our category of spectra. Um, I'm being a little bit vague about what this category of spectra is because there are many, many models uh, of it, it seems. Um, but just sort of the idea is that we have these, um, we have the suspension functor. Um, we have something that sort of looks like an adjoint to it. This taking this, uh, I guess you want to think of this as like a base loop space uh, sort of functor. So you want these guys to be endo functors on your category and you kind of want them to be uh, uh, an equivalent of categories too. Um, so that, that'll be the idea of this like stable category is that uh, we'll be able to make this thing in equivalence. And then as we, we saw in some, some previous talks too, one nice thing about this is that we take this sort of graded ring of a, a bi-graded ring, I guess, of uh, homotopy groups of spheres. We package it up into something called a homotopy group of a spectrum um, and then hope that we can calculate that with some other methods. 
So I wanted to mention uh, really quickly how this ties into like, so this is like a very super classical problem. It's still completely hugely wide open. Um, but I, I did want to mention that, you know, there's still some sort of, um, you know, maybe if you've heard of like chromatic homotopy theory, there's, you can sort of take the sphere spectrum and you can do some kind of localization procedure to it and get this thing called a, a p-local sphere spectrum. Um, and okay, it's, it's kind of complicated to state <laughs> what this, this theorem actually is, but you can kind of localize uh, your category with respect to some sort of homology theory um, and look at these p-local spheres and sort of build some, some kind of chromatic tower out of them. Um, and then there's this big theorem by Hopkins and Ravenel, this chromatic convergence theorem that if you take, uh, so I wrote holim here, and you might need to take the homotopy co-limit. I'd have to double check that. Um, but when you when you take this limit, you recover the at least the p-local sphere. And so the, is it the limit? Okay, cool. Okay. So you take, take this whole limit, you get the p-local sphere back. And uh, this p-local sphere, um, so it doesn't in include all of the, the information of the stable homotopy groups of spheres. It's kind of giving you these like P primary parts. Um, but the idea sort of what people do nowadays is sort of compute one prime at a time, um, you know, sort of run run some kind of spectral sequence, uh, long exact sequence kind of technology on it and just see if you can sort of get generators and relations and find non-trivial elements in this guy. Okay. Um, maybe just want to say two quick, okay, so I really love spheres. It's like, I'm delighted at any opportunity I get to, to talk about them. So I'll maybe just throw in two quick adverts for like, you know, why, why would you maybe even care about these, these homotopy groups of spheres? And uh, so my claim here is that if you care about, you know, uh, just like topological spaces or just computing homotopy groups, these guys show up in a natural way. Uh, if you just want to take the category of CW complexes, um, and you think of this as like a category inside of top, um, but maybe like a loose analogy, it's like it's like some, some kind of open dense category in that, you know, if any space you have, if you're just concerned about computing homotopy groups, you can do this CW approximation uh, kind of process and replace your space with a CW complex. Um, and these have a pretty combinatorial structure. And, you know, there's something I had to go looking for it. It turns out to be super early in Hatcher, but um, the there's a theorem that, you know, if you just have, uh, say, a CW complex and a subcomplex and you're just attaching um, some things to it uh, via attaching maps, if you take uh, essentially two maps that are in the same homotopy class, then you're going to get homotopy equivalent um, pushouts, essentially, by gluing these in. Um, and you can get it relative to the thing you're attaching if you want. And then also you kind of, you need this, this gluing data. Um, you know, so any, any of these CW, CW complexes is just going to be some huge iterated push out here of just, you know, you're going to include spheres uh, into disks or balls, and you're going to push out along your attaching maps, and that's going to give you, um, you know, one stage of your CW complex as you're building it. Um, so you're going to get this huge collection of attaching maps. And by the way, these are all going to be morphisms in top from, say, like the boundary of one of these balls, so in other words, a sphere to uh, you know, some part of the skeleton you already have, which is just going to be, I guess, maybe n minus or less than or equal to n cells. Um, all right, so these are just going to be, you're going to find a bunch of spheres in there too. Um, and right, so yeah, you kind of want to know like if you're attaching a map like this um, from a sphere to a sphere in your complex, how many different ways can you do it? Um, and you might be able to sort of pin down the homotopy type that way. Okay, I spent way too long in this picture. <laughs> Had too much fun with this, but uh, but just kind of like a, a quick overview of like where these might show up. So this is supposed to be some kind of ridiculous CW complex where I have just a you know maybe a bunch of points here. Uh, there's a point uh, there. There's a point there. I have some sort of edges here. I have also Maybe here in blue, I've glued in some, just some disks and some purple, and then purple over here, another disk. Um, and then I've also sort of glued in uh, this this two sphere in the middle to attach these these two disks along their along the boundary. And so, okay, if you're just gluing in copies of the one ball, you're going to see some elements of like pi naught s zero, the boundary of the one ball, um, just in in order to sort of fill in these edges. Um, if you're trying to fill in sort of areas like this, you're going to see stuff like. Phi one S one, 
because right, you're just sending in a disk. Um, and you can sort of do it by, uh, I guess there are Z many worth, Z, Z many uh, classes of these guys. So you can pick the degree of your map and get a, a different complex. And then if you know you have two of these uh, two cells like that, you can try to glue them together. Again, if you just have like two disks and you glue them along your boundary, you're going to get something at the sphere. So OK, just fill that sphere in with a, the ball like this, and then choose some element of, say, pi 2 s2 uh, in order to do that. And OK, so I mean, they, they show up in some way there. That's <laughs> the main point to take away from that, I guess. Uh, OK, so I'll maybe skip over this in, in, the, in the interest of time. But I just want to also say that another way that these, these come up um, is sort of a classical question, kind of going back to Milner about sort of when you can find exo exotic spheres. It's really the same sort of classification problem, except now you're thinking about, say, smooth manifolds, um, you know, maybe a, a forgetful functor to the underlying topological space. And you want to ask sort of what's in the fiber of that functor. So maybe if you just take, say, for the sphere, for, for example, and you have a bunch of smooth manifolds that are homeomorphic to the sphere, how many different uh, diffeomorphism types can you have? And uh, you know, this is the result of Milner that you can find a bunch of exotic S7s, uh, exactly 28 of them. It turns out that they form a group. Um, and the way that you compute this group, uh, yeah, don't worry about it too much, I guess. Um, but it ends up showing up in, in some quotient of a stable homotopy group of, of spheres. And uh, yeah, there's, there's some recent work on this from Hill Hopkins Ravenel, uh, sort of goes into this. Turns out that if you're looking at this, whatever this quotient is, um, in order to find these, these exotic spheres, uh, sort of reduces to this problem of looking at these, these Kivere invariants and asking for what dimensions you can find uh, manifolds with a specific Kivere invariant, in this case, one. And uh, I think this was like 2010s, maybe 2013, I think. Um, Bill Hopkins Ravenel showed that you know, there's just sort of a small collection of dimensions where this can happen. They're roughly of the form 2k minus 2. And there's just sort of one outstanding case with this n equals 126 that uh, Atiyah had some, some conjectures on um, sort of how to, how to address this case, this last case, uh, a couple of years ago. OK, so that, that concludes the, the, the motivation section. So I, I hope you are all sufficiently motivated to think about homotopy groups and spheres. Um, so. To set up kind of what we're talking about, I maybe want to say um, some stuff from sort of classical theory that maybe we want to have in our category of spectra or like have some analog of. Um, so really quick, when I'm talking about top, uh, maybe take the, the nicest sort of <laughs> point set model you want. I'm, I'm maybe thinking of like compactly generated weak house store for something and you know just take some sort of classical model structure on it. Um, if you want, maybe even just think of like pointed CW complexes. Um, but OK, so. We've, we've seen some of these in previous talks, so I won't spend too much time um, going into what they are. But you know, we, of course, have some notion of homotopy groups and spaces. Um, and it's some functor from top down to, say, z-graded uh, abelian groups, um, where I can just take x to its, its collection of um, um, homotopy groups, which, again, you can just realize as homotopy classes of maps from sort of different gradings of the, the sphere. Uh, we have this sort of suspension loop adjunction, which is pretty nice. Uh, we have it on homotopy classes of maps anyways. So we can take a suspension on the left and move it to the right and, and trade it in for a uh, base loop space. Uh, we have cofiber sequences. Oh, I should maybe mention that I'm using a little bit of a notation here. These, these stars here uh, indicate things that we will try to um, find some analog in in the category of, so we'll look at sequential spectra today. Um, I'll try to say what an analog of, of those will be. And then the other ones might have to come later. Uh, we have some notion of cofiber sequences. Um, sort of in the classical setting, there's this like pupae sequence. And uh, I've just dropped this in here to be, so I maybe be a little bit vague about uh, what's happening, but sort of the, the process um, that happens is maybe you have some class, some map um, in your category, f from x to y. Um, you do some kind of resolution procedure to it, some kind of like fiber and cofiber replacement, or maybe you're extracting like homotopy cofibers or fibers, um, and you get some sort of long exact sequence um, or some you know, chain of maps that way. And I mean, just kind of like you might do in sort of a classical um, 
homological algebra setting, you have some, some sequence and you apply some functor. And in, that, in this case, maybe you want to sort of take homology and the way you can realize this is homology is, um, I guess, realized in degree one, at least by mapping into one of these eilenberg mclean spaces. Um, and so if you kind of hit it with this functor, then you get a long exact sequence uh, in homology. Um, in this case, right, so you have x, y, and then you've extracted like a homotopy cofiber. And if you kind of chase down definitions, what you get out of this is essentially the, the long exact sequence of a pair. Uh, I won't say too much more about that. <laughs> uh, so you have another another kind of dual thing. Um, maybe it's, I guess it, it might also be called the, the PPA, PPA sequence, but you know, there's sort of a fiber version of it. Um, so this is kind of a dual thing. Again, you just have some uh, map you care about. In this case, you maybe extract uh, fibers, I guess, in this case, so some kind of resolution of it, um, resolve it out into some sequence of spaces, hit it with some functor. In this case, maybe you'll just map the zero sphere into it, um, and that's giving you sort of like a pi naught. Then you'll use this, um, this adjunction, since you have a bunch of uh, loop spaces appearing here, you can move them to suspensions on the other side, and you're going to get a long exact sequence in, in homotopy. Uh, Okay, I guess maybe I should pause. I just, I realized there was questions in chat. I don't know if I should. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, I think it. We were mostly complimenting your art in chat. Um, thank you. Also, this whole presentation is beautiful. I'm, I'm stunned. Oh. Like the color oh. scheme. Anyway, <laughs> I should save that for the end. But yeah. I'll have to, I'll have to send my, so I had a friend sort of help me make a color scheme for this. So I'll have to send them my thanks. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Just some some more tools that we might want on Spectra. Um, you know, if we're just in the classical setting, we have some notion of weak equivalences. Uh, this class W, just sort of the, the standard notion of uh, homotopy equivalences, and they're characterized by this property. By um, if I sort of take my morphisms and I restrict myself to the just these weak equivalences, and I hit it with I don't know my favorite functor here. Just take my star. I land in. Okay, whatever category I'm in on the right, in this case, graded abelian groups. Um, but all of these weak equivalences, sort of the image, um, in the image, they turn into isomorphisms. So that's that's kind of something we'll want to do too. Come up A with some notion of weak equivalence, and then uh, B some notion of category where they become equivalences. Uh, I talked a little bit about this. Um, just you know, we have sort of fibrin cofibrin objects, and we have some sort of placement procedure. And I'm just thinking of maybe CW complexes sitting inside of the topological category. And again, if you just have some arbitrary space, like you might as well think of it as sitting inside of the, the subcategory CW, um, because you can do that up to some kind of weak, uh, weak equivalence. And that's just a classical CW approximation. Uh, last couple of things we'll want is, you know, there's some functor. Um, top to some other category, um, you know, maybe just traditionally called HOTOP, where the images of all of your, your uh, weak equivalences will sort of become isomorphisms. So you kind of think of this as like taking your category and, you know, sort of invert W. So you'll need some kind of like localization procedure to do this. Um, and then also one nice property is that when you go to this homotopy category, you get something that's triangulated, um, which means you can kind of do homology quote unquote, you can sort of do this fiber, cofiber sequence stuff. Um, right, and then, uh, I mean, of course, sort of the, the powerhouse, the reason why you might want to do homology or cohomology in the first place is so you can, you know, come up with spectral sequences. Um, so, you know, in the classical setting, you know, maybe just the easiest case is just take a, you know, serif vibration. Um, I forget exactly what these are in the classical model structure, I guess. I guess these are the vibrations. Uh, okay, so if you have a vibration, right, you get some spectral sequence where on E2, you have something involving the, the cohomology of the base and the cohomology of the fiber, and this thing will abut to something about the cohomology of the, um, the total space. Um, and it turns out that there will be a pretty, well, there is an analog of this in spectra that, you know, is at least in uh, barnes Um so if you just have a map of spectra, you know, A to B or something like that, uh, there will be this thing called the atom spectral sequence. Um, 
So the E2 page of this guy is going to look like, I mean, it's worth kind of zooming in a little bit. Um, kind of what you really want to get at is information about homotopy classes of maps. Again, if I just plug in A, um, so this is going to be like homotopy classes of maps in spectra. So we're going to see sort of stable homotopy groups falling out of this um, if you plug in a sphere. Um, so you kind of want to get it info here, but you have to do some funny stuff. Um, you have to sort of take your, your second space and you have to do some kind of completion, key completion procedure. Um, but this is the thing you want to get info about, and you can sort of extract it from uh, something about the singular cohomology of your, your two guys, A and B. Um, and then you'll also get it as, so there'll be this X group and it'll be over the sort of, uh, so I guess here you might have to be, you might have to take something like mod P singular cohomology and then this will be like the mod P you know, on algebra. Uh, and you'll get an X over in this algebra. And as far as I know, this, this seems to be a pretty useful <laughs> computational tool. Okay, the last, last thing we'll look at is just like, we want some building blocks too. Um, uh, and maybe sort of for classical homotopy theory, you have two sort of nice classes of spaces. There's the, there are these island berkman McLean spaces, which I don't know, they're like Dirac deltas or something in your, in homotopy. So they just have, you plug in a group, you plug in an N and in homotopy, the G shows up in, uh, in the grading N and nowhere else, nothing shows up anywhere else. And then by some kind of like Ekman-Hilton duality or something, you have these, these guys called more spaces, which, um, it's, it's essentially the same same game, except for now it's showing up in homology. Just have your group show up in uh, exactly the degree you specify and nothing else anywhere else. Uh, okay, so that being said, see here. The goals for today. Um, so what I really wanna do is I really wanna define um, pi star X for um, X in some category of spectra. So I'll try to tell you um, what that category actually is. Uh, right, there, there will be a number of categories we could think about for spectra. Um, it's on the way, you know, try to define just what, is, what does pi star of X mean for X in spectra. Um, I'll try to say something about the, the sort of long exact sequences, the cofiber fiber sequences you get out of these guys. And uh, I'll try to say something about these, there are these pi star isomorphisms, which will essentially serve as our, our weak equivalences. Okay, so this is just meant to be sort of a, a reminder. I'll, I won't spend too much time on it, but just, you know, um, just sort of distinguish between what's happening in spaces and what's happening in spectra. Um, I wanna just lay out some things that are happening on the, the space side. Um, sort of if I'm, if I'm saying top anywhere again, maybe now I'm thinking of uh, either pointed topological spaces, maybe uh, compactly generated weak Hausdorff, maybe just pointed CW complexes, uh, pick your favorite. Uh, if we're talking about the smash product, again, we have sort of a point set level um, uh, model of this on spaces. Um, and if you restrict to this nice category, it's worth noting that there's some sort of associativity problem on the full category of, of topological spaces. Uh, but I think it's associative up to homeomorphism as long as you're, and then maybe you have to like take just compact spaces or something. Uh, but I think it works in this, this full category. Um, we have uh, suspension, um, which I'm just going to define to be just take S1 smash uh, your space. Um, and then also, you know, you have a sort of a K-fold suspension where you're just going to smash uh, K copies of your S1 together and then smash that whole thing into A. Um, and then using the fact that spheres, uh, when you smash them together, you get, uh, they combine into a K-sphere. You can just think of this as, you know, so the k suspension of A is just SK smash A. Uh, we do have like a point set level base loop space where again, you just take the morphisms, uh, you plug S1 into your first slot. Uh, you kind of want to make your category close. So you put a, you put a topology on it. Some, some refinement of the compact open topology I think works here. Then we'll have like homotopy classes of maps again, where you just take, take your usual homes, but um, take them up to homotopy. Uh, homotopy groups, right? So you can just take home homotopy, homotopy classes of maps of spheres into your space. Um, I don't know if we'll use this here, but you know, since you can realize a sphere is like a K-fold uh, smash of even just S0 if you want, you can play the adjunction game, move that off to the other side and um, 
somehow you only really need to worry about pi naught of loop spaces if you really want. Um, it's maybe useful to keep the ESKs around just for notation. Uh, we had some, some notion of stabilization coming from Freudenthal. Um, so eventually these stabilize, so you can just define the stabilized homotopy classes of maps as well, just uh, essentially just apply the suspension functor to, so it's going to induce a map on spaces of maps. So just keep applying this and then eventually they'll stabilize at some point and just all become isomorphic. Um, so just take the co-limit of, of this sequence and that'll be your, your stable um, homotopy class of maps. And then you can apply this, of course, just to taking homotopy groups by just take A to be, uh, say, like a zero sphere here if you want. And uh, yeah, just take stable homotopy classes. Uh, yeah, I don't think we'll need that. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the, the category we're working in, this category of spectra. Um, so maybe just start off by defining this category. So this, I'm using this notation. Uh, as in as in BNR, just SPA to the N, the N is supposed to be like a you know, some sort of grading or some action or something on your category. So these will be sequ sequential spectra. Um, just for the remainder of this talk, I'll just write it as SP. So we'll strictly be working in this, this model of spectra. Uh, and okay, so the objects of this category. Um, so you're gonna have some sort of sequence of spaces so all of these guys here are literally just going to be topological spaces. Um, or there's going to be a little bit more data. Uh, you kind of want to think of them as some kind of like chain complex or something. Um, and what happens is that, uh, so take this whole thing, uh, smash it with S1. And I just mean do this, do this level wise. Or if you want, um, maybe just for ease of notation, just think of suspending this entire thing. So you get some suspension of X naught, suspension of X1, suspension of X2 and so on. Um, and you'll have some maps like this. In order for this to be a spectrum, you want these sort of uh, structure comparison maps that let you um, compare the, the shift of one guy to just the next guy in your sequence. And you just want a bunch of these. So I don't know, uh, kind of vaguely looks like some kind of chain homotopy or something, except you don't really require these to be equivalences. Uh, maybe I'll label these as like sigma zero, sigma one, sigma two, and so on. Yeah, so the structure maps, um, again, these just go from some, so the suspension of the, the nth uh, graded piece of your space into the, the n plus first piece. Um, and these just have to be, say, continuous maps. Uh, nothing too, too fancy there. And so if you have this thing, uh, you'll call this collection of data uh, here will be a, a suspension spectrum. And I just want to point out, uh, so we've seen these uh, before, but just how do they, they fit into this picture? You can also sort of play the same game by just instead of hitting everything with a a smash, hit it with a base loop instead. Um, maybe, okay, there's maybe some weird issues happening at the zero term, but you get something like loops x1, loops x2, um, so on. Uh, okay, so yeah, it's just loops going down. And let me make sure I get the actual directions right. So I think you want uh, your structure maps to go like this. So maybe I'll call this omega naught, this omega one, this omega two. So you essentially want some comparison map between the, the looping of your nth graded piece and the n minus first graded piece. Um, and actually, I think for this, you actually want these all to be weak equivalences. And if you do this business, this will be uh, an omega. Uh, spectrum. So just to be and, clear, suspension oh, yeah. spectra and omega spectra are two different, they're two specific kinds of spectra. Um, mm. An omega spectrum is a is a spectrum where these these omega maps are equivalences and a suspension spectrum is a spectrum where the 
I guess where the sigma maps are equivalent is, but it's it's a certain like oh. not every spectrum is a suspension spectrum. I see. Even up to even up to homotopy equivalence. So do you actually require these these all to be equivalences too? If your spectrum is a suspension spectrum, yeah. But this is like this is a way of turning a space into a spectrum. Um, uh, okay. Does, does that make sense? There, there are spectra that are not suspension spectra. Like uh, K, K theory is not a suspension spectrum. Uh, okay, so this is probably why you need the other the other sort of models that pop up. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, maybe I'll I'll add that as a disclaimer here for the notes for later. So not all. Spectra are suspension spectra. And was the example here like a KU or KO or something? Just mark that there. OK. Uh, and OK, so we'll also have, um, so let's see, we have this, we have some notion of, of morphisms, at least if you just have sequential spectra. Um, right, so I think this came up in a, a previous talk too, where you can sort of just uh, define this in sort of the naive way where you have some uh, spectrum, say with the, the pieces, you know, some, some spectrum X with the pieces given by N and N plus one. And these guys are, say, uh, your structure maps, sigma n of x. And over here for y, you might have some sigma n of y uh, for sequential spectra. And then you might ask for uh, maps that essentially make this, this diagram commute, uh, maybe up to homotopy or something. Uh, all right, so I, I think that's probably what I'll run with for, for this sequential spectra. I think, yeah, we'll, we might see later that something something might go wrong with this. Uh, okay, yeah, so I guess that was a good time to mention the some of the other um, models of spectra that pop up in the book. So we have sequential spectra, um, and there's a couple of problems that pop out right away. One is that the smash product isn't commutative. Um, the other is that it's sort of not a functorial construction. And so there'll be um, a couple of different models one of these is this SBO, orthogonal spectra. Uh, another one, an O here is like the, the orthogonal group. So there'll be some, some action of that involved. Uh, another one is the, the symmetric spectra where sigma here is supposed to be like action of the, the symmetric group. Um, and I just wanna yeah, I'll point out that maybe there, there seem to be a bunch of different variants of this. You can sort of do a, sort of a stable infinity category version of this. You can do one in sequential sets. Uh, there's some diagram spectra that show up. Um, but yeah, so th those show up a little bit later. Uh, maybe a useful slogan to keep in mind as we're doing the next kind of stuff is that sigma k is, is going to kind of look like a, a shift functor, functor on a sequential spectrum, at least. Um, and hopefully that'll be more clear as we actually look at stuff. OK, so like some actual examples of, of these guys to keep in mind. Um, one of them is that if you, if you have a space uh, k, uh, here, maybe, maybe I'm just thinking of K as compact or something that's just a topological space. space. Uh, we have this functor sort of sigma infinity, which sends spaces into spectra. Uh, the way you do it is uh, in the nth graded piece, you put a, a SN smash your individual space. And uh, what you do is for the structure maps, okay, so you need to give a map from, say, the suspension of one of these guys into S, SN smash uh, your space. And let's see, the way you can do this is, this thing just is, well, okay, there, there is like a canonical map of a suspension of a space to S1 smash that space, for example. Um, and so there's a canonical, I guess, homeomorphism there. So you can just use that as your structure map. And here, I guess it should be a little bit more clear what you have to do is suspend this and then take S1 and then smash it with K. But you can write this as S1 smash S1 smash K. 
Okay, so that's like an S2. Well, okay, here I guess I'm using this, this canonical homeomorphism of uh, uh, smash product of spheres. Um, and this homeomorphism is what you use for your map into the, the next piece. Uh, okay. And so one nice thing you can do immediately with this definition is you can define the sort of sphere spectrum. Uh, so just take the space S naught and hit it with a, a sort of suspend, suspend in infinity here. Um, and this works out pretty well because up here you just get things that look like smash products of uh, spheres. And then you have these canonical homeomorphisms. Uh, so for example, this one is just S1 smash S1. This one is S1 smash S2 and so on. And just a really quick idea of like what these, these guys actually look like. Um, I think it's kind of useful to have some picture in mind. So you take, you know, S naught is just two points. So you're taking sort of this, this infinite suspension of these guys. This will be your sort of spectrum, all the component pieces. Uh, so you spend everything up, which is, you know, just kind of cone off, uh, take two cones on your space and sort of glue them along the boundary. So here, you know, add a cone point, glue it to everything, add a cone point, glue it to everything, and then glue those together. And okay, you get something that's homeomorphic to a sphere or an S1 a circle. Same deal here. You just think of this as like an equator or something. Take it there, uh, cone off one piece of it, cone it off again, and then glue them along the, the equator there. And you get something that's homeomorphic to a two sphere. And you can just kind of keep going. I, ran out of imagination here. I don't know how to draw a cone on a two-sphere, but um, and I guess maybe that's that's an exercise. <laughs> can we ask you a question? A few of oh, us yeah. are confused about something. Can, sure. can you scroll up to your definition of spectra? Uh, let's see. There we go. So what are the maps? What are the vertical maps in these diagrams? Ah, right. So this is... Um, yeah, this is just essentially applying the suspension. Yeah, so like, so like the the equator, the. Uh, let's see. So like, I said that like it made sense. The the every object has an inclusion into its into its um, suspension. Ah, uh, I see. You're saying. Yeah. But then the other the other the map from. The x's to their loop spaces. I think those have to be trivial. Um, hmm. Oh right. Yeah. I guess I should. Yeah. So maybe these are like two different things. Like if you, one of them would just be to take just this data by itself, and that would be a suspension spectrum. And the other one would be to take just this this data by itself, and that would be an omega spectrum. I don't think omega spectrums have or spectra have maps from xn to xn plus one in their data. It's just maps from x oh. to the loop of xn plus one. I see. OK. So if you're, if you're just taking yeah. this stuff here, then you don't have any of these. That's at least my understanding. Right. OK. Uh, I agree with Olive on this one. The, the same with the, the other the, the other definition the the oh I guess never mind the definitions intersect I see so I guess intersect. yeah so the thing is you might not have these maps here at all you just sort of have just these well, it's just it's not part of the data I see yeah I guess maybe just think of these as like a like a literal sequence or something yeah this was confusing to me when I was reading this too because in my head I had this image of them being kind of like chain complexes also. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, okay. I guess, I don't know, can you compose these two guys? To, uh, I don't know. It does seem like the vertical maps would be trivial in both cases or null homotopic in the, you know, in the first example. So yeah, it's really just a sequence with these relationships between suspensions and the next guy. Nice. We can we can draw the vertical arrows and think of it as like apply the functor suspension or something, but it's not really a map, is my interpretation. I 
because you may not have um, an actual map from something like like something like that. Um, if you put a plus one or a minus one somewhere, that's the part we need. Or no, wait, sorry, other way. So, so you you do have that map, but it's. I, I think all that Eric's saying is it's no homo topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Okay. I see. You can loop it up the the cone. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess I might have to adjust a few things later. Uh, well, I can maybe just delete some arrows and think that should work. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, maybe I want to delete these guys for the uh, suspension spectrum. Uh, okay, I guess for spheres that it happens to work out. <laughs> uh, but okay, yeah, so you can get a suspension spectrum from the sphere, just uh, infinite suspend S naught. Uh, the next sort of nice example is this like heilenberg mclean spectrum. The notation is just HG for, for G a group. And we use this fact that just on, on the level of spaces, there's a, a homotopy equivalence between essentially KGN and loops KGN plus one. So you can use these as your sort of structure maps and assemble an omega spectrum out of them. Uh, and yeah, so this thing will have interesting homotopy groups. Try to compute it if I if I can here. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll just point out there is uh, some analog of uh, more spaces in this setting. So you have these more spectra, but defining them is, is pretty complicated for an arbitrary G. Um, but they do have this property. Um, so I'll, maybe the, the spoiler alert here is that this thing will have homotopy concentrated in degree zero, I want to say. And this thing will have, so there's you know, some homology on spectra you can do, and this thing will have homology um, concentrated in uh, degree zero too. Uh, but you know, for at least Z mod n, uh, there is sort of a nice-ish construction of it. You essentially take a sphere spectrum, uh, you might have to do, uh, I don't quite remember what this notation was. It might be like a fibrin or cofibrin replacement. Uh, but you'll have this multiplication by n map, and you can take the homotopy cofiber of that to get this uh, spectrum. And then it's worth um, just remarking offhand that you know there, there will be some sort of analog of CW complexes in here. Um, well, so you can just define CW spectra. The only the real difference here is that um, each of the sort of constituent spaces will be a CW complex, and the structure maps. Um, Will essentially be uh, uh, an isomorphism onto a subcomplex of. Let's see, so this should probably be n plus one. Uh, so it'll be an inclusion into a subcomplex that's also an isomorphism. Uh, maybe skip some bits on adjoint, but maybe it's it's worth pointing out that they they do exist. Uh, there is some adjoint to this uh, forming the suspension spectrum, and it's uh, sort of taking infinite loops. Uh, and you can use this, you can sort of cook up, if you have this adjunction, you can use this to cook up um, sort of an endofunctor on this side or an endofunctor on this side uh, by sort of taking the, the unit and the co-unit. Um, and there's some sort of interesting constructions you can do with that. Uh, some more examples that come up. Uh, let me see if I actually have down because I want to be a little bit careful about the indexing here. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this is, uh, I think we saw a little bit of this uh, in either the last talk or the one beforehand. Um, the idea is you want to sort of take a space, you want to build a spectrum out of it, but maybe you want to uh, shift the sequence around a little bit. So you'll have this. Uh, sort of sh shifted suspension uh, spectrum functor takes a space, and sort of does that. When you think about it, I guess, is maybe just take uh, take the suspension spectrum of your space and then do some kind of shift to it as well. And what this will be, the constituents. So here, the index uh, is J. So you'll just put points in the first uh, J components. 
and are the first j minus one components. In the jth component, you will put uh, essentially the, well, you want to write it like this first, sigma infinity of k, the zeroth piece. That'll go in the jth component, and then the j plus first. You'll get the uh, first piece of that, um, so on. So you can write this as, say, s not smash k and s1 smash k. And let's see, so you need structure maps. So you'll have something like the suspension of s not smash k. And this will essentially look like something like So S1 smash S naught smash K. And okay, I guess with S naught, it's it's not really super interesting because I think this is actually homeomorphic to K. Um, so you get S1. So there's a homeomorphism like that. If you get this one, I think it's a little bit more interesting. S1 smash S1 smash K. And that'll need to map down into S2 smash K. And you're essentially doing that, do that by sort of reassociating this and applying the homeomorphism to those first two uh, smash factors. And so those will be your, your structure maps. And there's, there's one that comes up uh, in the book fairly often is where you just take the uh, the sphere spectrum and you shift it by one. Uh, so just put a point in the first component, uh, move everything over by one. So you just get the first component in number in you know, slot two, second in slot three, and so on. Um, and this is kind of an important example because you sort of want this to be weakly equivalent to the sphere spectrum or somehow any, any finite shift. Um, it shouldn't really matter, right? Uh, if you're uh, taking homotopy groups, you're kind of taking a co-limit. Um, and so, you know, just shifting things over by some finite number um, of slots really shouldn't change what happens in the limit. So this is F1 and S1, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. So this should be on a space. Yeah. Okay. Shoot, sorry, I just got to the actual definition of, of homotopy groups in the last five minutes here, but um, hopefully it won't be too bad. So just the, the way we'll def define these guys is that, okay, take a suspension spectrum X. So we'll have a sequence of spaces. We'll have some structure maps from the suspensions into the next uh, piece. And what we're gonna do is just define the nth homotopy group in the category of spectra of this as essentially the same definition in, as in spaces. Uh, take the co-limit over K, where you increase the, uh, well, okay. So yeah, you're, you're going to be, I guess, in spaces for this. Um, so you take the pi n plus K of the, the Kth piece of your, your spectrum. And I guess it's, it's a little bit unclear, like, do you actually have uh, sort of maps between these guys? Uh, so, you know, a directed system or something where you can take this co-limit um, so if you just kind of write this out, what this means at the level of spaces, you're taking a co-limit of, um, so maybe Sn into the, the zeroth piece, and then Sn plus one into the first piece, and Sn plus two into the second piece. So how do you actually get these, these maps? Um, so here, maybe just fix the, the n plus kth piece, um, and the n plus kth homotopy group of xk, and you want to get something to uh, over here where you increase the indices by one. Uh, so the first thing you can do is just uh, replace this Sn plus K with the K-fold suspension of Sn. Um, and then, okay, just suspend both sides of this. Now you have a K plus one-fold suspension of Sn and the suspension of uh, your sort of Kth piece of your suspension spectrum. And so, okay, now you can apply your structure map and get the Kth plus one, K plus first piece. Um, and then you can kind of undo this, this homeomorphism, just, yeah, this is S s to the k plus one smash sn. So you get an s to the n plus k plus one from a homeomorphism. 
Uh, oh, right. I guess I, I should mention that this is this isn't really the structure map on the nose. Right? The structure map really just goes between uh, spaces. Um, so you need to kind of take the, the induced map on homotopy classes of maps. Um, and so maybe keep a star for it, but I sort of drop the star notation almost immediately. Uh, you skip some bits on, so you get, you get a functor out of this, uh, just the same way you do for spaces. And okay, let's see if I, in the last couple of minutes, if I can actually <laughs> run through this calculation, shouldn't be too bad. Um, and let's try to like actually compute some homotopy group. Um, and maybe the, the one for this uh, eilenberg mclean spectrum uh, is a nice candidate because we're hoping it'll just be G concentrated in degree zero and nothing anywhere else. Uh, so the way to do this is maybe just focus on pi naught first. So we wanna show the pi naught of this thing is just G itself. Um, so just the, the definition of this will just be, so we're gonna take the co-limit over j of say pi j. And okay, I wanna take my spectrum and extract the uh, jth piece. And again, I, well, I, okay, it's really, this should be like a, a zero plus j or something like that if I was being super, super careful, but. Um, okay, so what actually is this? The, just again, the co-limit over j. Uh, well, so this this piece of this spectrum is just going to be the eilenberg mclean space um, at the jth component. And, uh, well, this hopefully isn't too bad. Taking again the co-limit over j, and these are going to be, well, actually, I guess I don't even need to write this. So this is uh, literally just, uh, G for each each J, right? Because this uh, this only lights up when uh, you're taking pi pi J of it. So you end up taking the co-limit over J of so there's you know your zeroth piece and your first piece, your second piece. And it's just always G because these two indices always match up. So you just get a G out of that. And it just remains to show that, uh, let's say like pi uh, n of this thing, hg is just equal to zero for, uh, let's say n greater than or equal to one. And maybe just copying down this piece. So we want pi n, we take the co-limit over j, and the only difference is we take n plus j there. And this is just this co-limit. Uh, so pi n plus j of kg j. Uh, actually, I don't know if there's is there really anything to do here. Uh, I wrote out a longer calculation, but So I think as long as, as long as j is like bigger than one, you're taking like the co-limit of okay, so, so maybe with some conditions on n and j, uh, n plus j, yeah. So if j is bigger than one, then n plus j and j will be different. So maybe after some finite number of steps, you'll just end up with a bunch of zeros. And so that thing will be zero. And so I'm not actually sure how well that works. I did a much longer, more complicated. If I think what you want but... is if n is non-zero, then then n plus j is, is different from j. Ah. So so then what you just said literally works. In yeah, there we go. Or if yeah, even if n is bigger than or equal to one. I mean, okay. so to be clear, the spectra can have negative homotopy groups too. Um, oh yeah, and they're they're defined, you know, exactly the way by by taking this exact same co-limit. Um, 
But again, if, if n is not equal to zero, then n plus j is not equal to j. And so these, the homotopy groups in this diagram will all vanish. I'm trying to see if I have a good example of that written down, if it's not. Uh, it's, a, it's a little more involved. So I, I wrote down a computation of something where negative homotopy groups come up. So I can, I can leave that in the full version of the notes and share them out uh, if people want to look that over. Uh, I'll maybe just say, since yeah, it's over, I'll, I'll just say kind of what I what I didn't get to. Um, some more computations. Uh, you can prove that um, if you take the the sort of spectrum home uh, spectral category homotopy groups of the suspension spectrum of a space, in which you recover is literally the definition of stable homotopy groups of that space. Um, you can kind of use these, these sort of shifted suspension spectra to show that, uh, get a nice proof out of it. These guys carry some interesting information. For example, MO uh, you know, is a spectrum you can sort of cook up. Um, and if you take the homotopy groups of this, you start getting things like, you know, uh, you know classes of manifolds. Uh, so in this case, smooth real manifolds, uh, modulo cohortism. Uh, you can actually get a group structure out of this. Uh, if you do MU, you get this, you know, there's like this Lazard ring that shows up and this thing is, uh, it shows up in number theory, I think some formal group laws and elliptic curves and all kinds of fun stuff. It also shows up in topology a little bit. Um, now you take like almost complex structures on smooth manifolds and mod up by cobordism. Um, but then, yeah, the, the problem here um, that maybe leads into the, the next part um, is just that you really want these, these sort of shifts to not, um, affect the equivalence, the sort of stable equivalence somehow. Like you, if you just shift the sphere spectrum by one, you're taking a co-limit over homotopy groups. Um, if you're just shifting it by some finite amount, even you still kind of want that to be a weak equivalence. So induce um, an isomorphism on the, the homotopy groups. Um, but it turns out if you if you just do the sort of level-wise uh, stable model structure, then this doesn't end up being a weak equivalence. Um, and so you kind of what you end up needing to, to go through is, you know, you come up with this notion of pi star isomorphism, which is kind of exactly what you'd want, um, something that induces uh, isomorphisms on homotopy groups of spectra, um, sort of at every level. Um, and these will be your weak equivalences. And once you have these, you can sort of prove some properties. Um, they'll be preserved under some like basic operations like suspending and taking loops. Um, and then you can sort of set up uh, like actual like taking fiber sequences, um, co-fiber sequences, and getting sort of long exact sequences out of them, and uh, like saying saying a few things like characterizing um, yeah. So when when is a map sort of a weak equivalence? Um, you can sort of check it by checking if sort of the, the co-fibers are or the fibers are contractible or not contractible. Uh, there, there are weak equivalents if you send these to a point. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, there, there's a lot more, so maybe I'll just leave it in the notes and throw it up if people want to read it, but maybe I'll go ahead and, and stop there. So thank you. OK, let's uh, give Zach a round of applause. So does anyone have any, any questions for him? <laughs> 